starting with upper limb anatomy and we have few questions to address so the first question is the weight of upper limb is transmitted to the axial skeleton by and another question is fracture of clavicle most commonly occurs at so we'll come back to these questions after we understand the theory part so in today's lecture we're going to focus on clavicle okay we're going to focus on the clavicle and various ligaments related to it so first you have to understand there are few general features of clavicle that can come as a question the first is that clavicle is a long bone in horizontal direction so it is a long bone okay clavicle is a long bone which is in horizontal direction horizontal direction so most of the long bones they are vertical for example this means vertical and this means horizontal so most of the long bones are in vertical direction that means they are straight whereas clavicle is the long bone which is present in horizontal direction and this itself is a mcq we we'll go to the second point is that clavicle has no bone marrow it has no bone marrow another feature is that clavicle is subcutaneous throughout that means if you touch your clavicle now you can feel it so this is the this is one of the bone which is subcutaneous throughout that means you can throughout feel your clavicle if you try to touch the clavicle so it is subcutaneous throughout so such features can come as a mcq like all of the following are features of clavicle except so you must know these three peculiar features regarding the clavicle now talking about the ossification of clavicle ossification means to form so how does the clavicle form and how many ossification center it has so for example if this is the clavicle okay so it has two primary center for ossification clavicle has two primary centers for ossification okay so it has two primary center for ossification and clavicle has only one secondary center for ossification clavicle has one secondary section one secondary center for ossification so two primary center for ossification and one secondary center for ossification why is this a mcq because most of the long bones have only one primary center for ossification have only one primary center for ossification but clavicle is a long bone which has two primary center for ossification and again i'm telling you clavicle is a it's present in which it is horizontal it is not vertical it is horizontal long bone so once you have understood these features we'll go ahead so look at this image you know it has two primary center of ossification and this is a mcq and one secondary center for ossification so this this side of the clavicle is towards the sternum okay towards the sternum and this side of the clavicle is towards the humerus bone and why it is called as acromial end that you'll understand in the further slide because acromial end that means it comes to touches the acromial end of the scapula so we'll understand the parts of now the so clavicle has few parts first you have to understand that so there are three parts we'll divide clavicle into three parts so this part is called as the medial one third is called as the medial one third now why medial always remember in anatomy medial means towards the body and lateral means away from the body why medial because here you have the sternum here you have the sternum that is okay it present in the middle part of the body so if this part of the clavicle present towards the sternum is called as the medial one third of clavicle and this part of the clavicle which is present towards the hand is called as the lateral one third because it is present away from the body so this is the lateral one third of clavicle and that was the medial one third lateral one third and this middle part is called as the intermediate intermediate one third that means the middle part of clavicle but sometimes this whole term this whole term is called as the medial two third okay called as the medial two third of clavicle now why is this important you will understand in the applied anatomy section 
so for now just understand the parts of clavicle this is the medial one third this is the intermediate one third and this is the lateral one third whereas these two so sometimes in the theory and in the mcqs are clubbed as the medial two third of clavicle so that you have to understand now we are going into the applied anatomy once you study a bit of anatomy you have to apply it in clinical practice so if you go to study the fracture of clavicle now fracture of clavicle most commonly occurs at the medial two third medial two third and lateral one third of clavicle occurs at the medial two third and lateral one third so clavicle fracture mostly occurs at the medial two third okay and lateral one third so fracture clavicle mostly occurs at this position whenever you get a patient of fracture clavicle the most common location is the medial two third and the lateral one third of the clavicle the same statement can be passed as most commonly occurs at the intermediate intermediate one third and lateral one third so now the meaning of both these statements are the same that is fracture clavicle most commonly occurs at the intermediate one third and lateral one third or most commonly occurs at the medial two third and lateral one third both these statements if you put in the diagram both these statements mean the same thing so we'll revise it again Cl fracture clavicle most commonly occurs at the medial two third and lateral one third at this junction or most commonly occurs at the intermediate one third or lateral one third so fracture clavicle most commonly occurs out here so in the mcq don't get confused you have to understand this concept now we study regarding the acromion and coracoid process now these words will come across when you study scapula so the scapula has the acromion and the coracoid process but now when we are studying clav clavicle how do we relate that so come back to this image which you had seen earlier so this is the acromial end this is the acromial end of the clavicle why is it called acromial end because the acromion of scapula it comes in this position whereas the coracoid process of scapula will come infraclavicular so if this is the acromial end of scapula that is coming towards this part of the clavicle the coracoid process so this will be the coracoid process that will be where the coracoid process will come coracoid process can be seen infraclavicular fossa it is seen in the infraclavicular fossa okay so come back to this part acromion and coracoid process so the acromion process if this is the again we'll draw if this is the clavicle this is the acromion process the acromion process comes out here acromion process is coming out here and why i'm trying to explain you this because this forms a joint that is the acromioclavicular joint called as the acromio clavicular joint and acromioclavicular joint it helps in shoulder abduction so now what is shoulder abduction now always remember two terms there are two terms something called as abduction and something called as adduction in anatomy you will come across this a lot now remember abd abduction that means to take it away from your body and add adduction that means to add to your body so if you take your arm and take it away from your body it is called abduction and if and when it is away or it is up and you get your arm back towards your body it is called as adduction a mnemonic to remember this is that a double d add so when you add your any part of your body towards your body that is called that phase is called adduction and when you take your arm away from your body or even your leg that is called as abd abduction so this acromioclavicular joint it helps in the shoulder abduction this point we wanted to get across and the coracoid process is present in the infraclavicular region this you have to understand so all these we are only talking mcqs we are not discussing anything that is not a mcq so everything is a mcq which you must note down okay so try to check the acromion process so this is the scapula first we'll outline the scapula so this is the scapula okay scapula this is the coracoid process coracoid process of the scapula coracoid process of the scapula 
and this is the acromion process of scapula so both the acromion and coracoid are parts of the scapula which we are studying in relation to the clavicle so this you are seeing the scapula from the anterior side if you come behind and see the scapula from the posterior side then you will understand that there is a spine of scapula scapula has a spine and the end of this spine is called as the acromion process so this is the acromion process of scapula whereas this was the coracoid process of scapula acromion process and coracoid process so i hope you are able to see the acromion process so this acromion process when it comes ahead it forms the acromioclavicular joint which helps to take this humerus far away from your body towards this direction when you take your humerus to this direction it is called as abd abduction and when you get it back towards your body is called a double d adduction so question comes which or which joint helps in the a b d abduction of shoulder you have to answer it is the acromioclavicular joint so far when you once you have understood this come to the another topic is called as the upper limb weight transmission so how will the upper limb weight transmission occur what is the meaning of upper limb weight transmission so if this is the upper limb if this is the upper limb it has to transmit your weight so the meaning of this statement is that all the weight of your upper limb it has to be transmitted to the central bones that is the sternum and the ribs because those bones are taking the weight of the upper limb so this transmission of weight of the upper limb to the sternum and ribs for a steady motion for steady any activity is called as the upper limb weight transmission and this occurs with the help of few ligaments this occurs with the help of few ligaments now which are the ligaments for weight transmission first point you have to remember those all ligaments all ligaments attaching one bone to another bone help in weight transmission so all ligaments attaching from one bone to another bone it helps in weight transmission if there is any ligament in the body that is attached to the same bone for example there is one ligament in the scapula that, that is attached to the acromion process of scapula and goes to the coracoid process of scapula so that ligament's journey is towards the same bone that is it is attaching scapula to scapula only so the, such ligaments don't help in weight transmission those ligaments that attached from one bone to another bone for example if there is a ligament attaching from clavicle to scapula that ligament will help in weight transmission so we'll study those ligaments now before that before you study the ligaments you have to first name those ligaments so first remember the coracoclavicular ligament first note down the coracoclavicular ligament okay coracoclavicular ligament this coracu coracoclavicular ligament in detail we study ahead second ligament that you have to remember is the costoclavicular ligament costo clavicular ligament another ligament that you have to remember is a interclavicular ligament interclavicular ligament so now follow this coraco clavicular ligament now anatomy is simple once you understand the meaning of these words so coraco clavicular ligament now what is the meaning of coraco coraco they are referring to the coracoid process of scapula coraco they are referring to the coracoid process of scapula so can you see the coracoid process of scapula so coraco clavicular ligament so this ligament is present here between the coracoid process of scapula and clavicle hence so easily it is called as the coraco clavicular ligament which is present between the coracoid process of scapula and clavicle come to the next statement that is costo clavicular ligament again anatomy is all about words costo means rib so that ligament which is present between the rib and the clavicle is called as the costo clavicular ligament and third one is very easy to interpret called as the interclavicular ligament that ligament which is present between the two clavicles is called as the interclavicular ligament so all these ligaments they help in the weight transmission of upper limb but the question that comes to you out of all these ligaments which is the most important for weight transmission then your answer is the first one that is the coracoclavicular ligament is most important 
for weight transmission it is most important for weight transmission it is the coracoclavicular ligament now we we'll go to the next concept of studying through these images so first we will tell you about the coracoclavicular ligament okay talking regarding the coracoclavicular ligament i told you coracoclavicular ligament is attached between the coracoid process of scapula and the clavicle so this ligament is the most important ligament for weight transmission going to the next ligament that is the costoclavicular ligament or first we study the costoclavicular ligament so this is the costoclavicular ligament costoclavicular ligament when the ligament is attached to the rib and the clavicle is called as the costoclavicular ligament so this also helps in weight transmission but the important one that you studied was this one that is the coracoclavicular ligament this is most important for weight transmission of upper limb which is the mcq then another ligament you studied that is the interclavicular ligament so here is the inter clavicular ligament so this interclavicular ligament is attached from one clavicle to another clavicle and in the middle it attaches even to the sternum you can see here it is attaching even to the sternum that's why it helps in weight transmission that is the interclavicular ligament another mcq is that our uh, regarding the coracoacromial ligament now in the name only suggest coraco means coracoid process of scapula so this is the coracoid process of scapula this is the coracoid process of scapula and this is the acromion process of scapula this is the acromion process of scapula so the ligament present between the coracoid process of scapula and the acromion process of scapula is called as the coracoacromial ligament why is this important because this does not help this does not help in weight transmission and why doesn't it help in weight transmission because this ligament is attaching a scapula to scapula only because coracoid process is a part of scapula and acromion process is also a part of scapula so hence this ligament will not help in weight transmission because it is a ligament between the same bone that is only the scapula and that is why it does not help in weight transmission so what is helping in weight transmission is these three ligaments coracoclavicular costoclavicular and interclavicular and coracoclavicular is the most important so in the mcq they will give you all these four options they will give you coracoclavicular costoclavicular interclavicular and the fourth one will be this one that is a coracoacromial and they will ask you all of the following help in weight transmission except then this is the except or the, another question will be which is the most important and most important is the coracoclavicular ligament so after understanding today's lecture we'll go back to the questions that came and we'll try to answer it if you can answer this question that means you have understood the lecture so fracture clavicle most commonly occurs at medial 2/3 and lateral 1/3 okay you have read that intermediate 1/3 and lateral 1/3 okay this also is correct both yes both are correct d okay so this lateral 2/3 and medial 1/3 is not the answer so fracture clavicle most commonly occurs at the both that is it most commonly occurs at medial 2/3 and lateral 1/3 can also be called as the intermediate 1/3 and lateral 1/3 of the clavicle another question you have the weight of upper limb is transmitted to the axial skeleton by now here they are asking you only for one answer that means they are asking you the most important so obviously coracoacromial is not taking place obviously you know the answer and it is a coracoclavicular ligament because this is the most important and they are asking you only one option in the question so the weight of upper limb is transmitted to the axial skeleton most importantly by the coracoclavicular ligament so this is the answer Thank you for watching today's lecture.